Our Father in Heavens, hallowed be your name. It's John Adil again. Thank you for liking and sharing my last video where I exposed the immigration in Islam. But today is something special. Was Muhammad a prophet or a medical patient? In Sahih Bukhari, Aisha explains the condition of Muhammad during his so-called revelations when he used to get revealed. So she says that Muhammad used to sweat heavy, breathe heavy, with his face turned red even during winters. And Muhammad used to hear ringing bells as a sign of revelation. This is quoted in Bukhari, Volume 1, Hadith number 02. <clears throat> well, this was really an abnormal science for me of getting revealed. So, I did a little bit of research. Well, okay, then I came to know about a disease called tinnitus T I N N I T U S tinnitus yes and the possible symptoms of the disease are heavy breathing with rage heavy sweating with ringing bells in the ear an occurrence of this disease is after 40 years of the age in men and most amaz amazingly Muhammad claimed proper prophethood at the age of 40 years isn't that stunning so was he a prophet nope he was not a prophet he was a medical patient Elijah Moses John the Baptist they all were the prophets but not perverts look at Abraham Isaac and Jacobs They all had a good moral character, but Muhammad was a sex pervert, a rapist, a pedophile. Prophets don't come with erected penis and naked swords to kill their opponents and rape their women and girls. They never do that. Jesus taught us not to steal, not to wish for the property of other people, not to have sex pure marriage but Muhammad orders his followers in Quran Surah 8 verse number 69 to enjoy happily the loot of war and what were the loot of war of course women and other valuables and the wars and the wars which Muhammad fought were not wars actually but organized robberies of innocent Jewish and Christian tribes. Lord Jesus warned us of false prophets as wolves hiding under the coat of sheep and Muhammad was one of those wolves who taught taqiyah lies to Muslims. Respected sisters, may I ask you a question how would you feel if you come to know that your husband was having any other woman in his mind while having sex with you I mean to uh, I mean to ask you what if your husband is thinking that he is having sex with other women in his mind while using your body in lovemaking of course you will feel sick of that person. Well, this is one of the sick and pathetic teachings of Muhammad. In Sahih Bukhari, Muhammad was roaming on the streets of Medina and he saw a woman, that woman sexually appealed to him and he got aroused. So he rushed to one of his wife's home, Hifsa. 
she was staining God's skin at that moment. Now, staining uh, an any any animal skin is the very stinking environment. Let me tell you that. And Muhammad had sex with her in that stinking staining atmosphere, and also asked his followers to do so. He asked his followers to do the same if they fail to achieve the girl who made them horny. While everyone of you just know about Aisha, and um, but let me tell you that Muhammad was a habitual pedophile. All of you just know about Aisha and all. Let me tell you one more incident, just to prove my point that he was a habitual pedophile. <clears throat> A book named Muhammad Abi Hanbal, Hadith number 26329, tells us that Muhammad saw Umme Habiba bint Abbas when she was a milk drinking baby child. He said that if that girl grows up a bit and he is alive, then he would marry her. He was 62 at that time and he died after some time expressing his interest in that baby girl. Can you imagine? Uh, if a normal person like me and you will see a baby child, we will feel um, love for her, like giving sweets to her, giving twice to her, yeah. But look at the love of Muhammad, that's, that's entirely different. And I mean, how can a normal person have a sexual desire, just a baby girl having uh, milk, a milk feeding baby girl? That's not normal. That's demonic. That's really demonic. <sighs> Sahih Muslim, volume 8, Hadith number 33110 tells us that Aisha took her dolls to Muhammad's house when she was wedded to him. Bukhari volume 4 hadith number 232 tells us that Aisha used to wash sperm stains from his clothes. Muhammad used to daydream about sex every time. Sex and porn and raping was in his head every time. He used to daydream about it. According to Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, book number 71, hadith number 660, where Aisha is that Muhammad used to think that he had sex while actually he not. So, he was a daydreamer. He was not a prophet, but you can say a 6th century playboy. Do prophet get revelation while they are busy under a single blanket under a, under a single blanket with a girl? Well, according to Tabari, volume 17, page number seven, page number seven, he got revealed when he was busy with Aisha under a single blanket. Is that normal? was your prophet and look at the kind of respect he is giving to girls I have not approached women till yet <sighs> do prophets get nasty dirty sexy naked dreams no prophets are pure they are clean their spirit is clean, their soul is clean, their heart is pure. But in the case of Muhammad, it was different. Muhammad used to have dirty and naked sexy dreams. Well, in Bukhari, volume 7, book number 62, hadith number 15, Muhammad saw a man carrying Aisha and Aisha was wrapped in silk fabric. And that man asked to remove silk fabric from her body to strip her naked. 
and the most filthiest part of this Islamic belief and the relationship and the relationship of Muhammad is that Aisha used to see dried sperms on Muhammad's clothes on Muhammad's clothes she used to scratch them off with her nails sometimes and stated in Bukhari book number 002 headed number 0572 and why did Muhammad always had dried semen on his clothes Bukhari volume 5 headed number 268 tells us that he used to visit many during one night cause he had sexual strength of 30 men so this is prophet muhammad with which muslims praise a lot and he is a role model for billions of muslims around the world a play by a prophet well you all must have heard about muslims defending having multiple wives at a time by saying that every wife is treated equally all of their needs are fulfilled well it's a lie a big big lie now let me tell you about a woman her name was Sauda she was the wife of Muhammad she was old Muhammad decided to divorce her cause he was losing attraction <clears throat> Cause of her old age when Sauda came to know about this she got worried and begged Muhammad not to divorce her and she will never ask for a night instead he can go and enjoy his nights with Hifsa and Aisha in Ibn Kathir volume 3 part 5 page number 293 let me tell you about is another wife named as Utila bin Qais. She left Islam when Muhammad died and married Akrama, who was the son of Jewish leader and he was a rival of Muhammad. So at that time, uh, Muhammad wives got so suppressed by Islamic Sharia law that they found refuge in marrying Jewish and Christian people. There's a taqiyah again when Muslims tell you that wives are allowed to be beaten but softly with toothbrush. That is a big lie. A very big lie. Now let me tell you one thing. In Quran chapter number 38 verse number 44 Muslims are asked to take a green branch of a tree to beat their wives now let me clarify you one thing here that Saudi Arabia was not having apple trees or mango trees neither <coughs> during that time but the trees of dates were there 14 1500 years ago and the minimum width of the green branch was this much so let's imagine if you hit a woman with this much thick branch how much it will hurt and let me try to prove this point with an other hadith in Sahih Muslim hadith number 2127 Aisha says that Muhammad struck her on the chest which gave her a lot of pain so that nullifies the point that women are to be beaten softly with the toothbrush since Muhammad was a master of fraud as his fellow Muslims are as well let me tell you that his first marriage with Khatija was based on fraud yes his first marriage which with Khadija was based on fraud according to Siratul Halabiya 
Volume 1, page number 435 explains that father of Khatija, his name was Khwalid bin Asad, didn't want to marry his daughter Khatija with Muhammad. So Muhammad prepared with Khatija a big food and wine and invited everybody from Quraysh. So everybody ate along with Khatija's father and, draw and drank lots of wine too. When his father got drunk deeply, Muhammad asked her father to let him marry his daughter Khatija. Khalid was badly drunk, so he agreed and Muhammad married Khatija right there, right at that moment. And later on, nothing was left instead of regrets and embarrassment when Khatija's father came back in his normal condition. Islam permits post-marital rapes. Yes, Islam totally permits post-marital rapes. Um, rapes of um, uh, non-Muslim girls are uh, another uh, issue, but any Muslim man can rape his wife whenever he wants. According to Bukhari, Volume 72, Hadith number 705 states that a woman came to Muhammad to uh, uh, stop her husband from beating her. Her skin was bruised badly. She was beaten because she was failing to fulfill the sexual needs of her husband. But Muhammad did not help her, but asked her instead to comfort, <coughs> him, to comfort her Muslim stinking husband on bed he did not help her he was not a, he was not a helper of women instead of realizing her pain of the bruises at her skin he would have stopped uh, her husband but no he commanded back to that lady to go back and comfort her husband on the bed why that woman had uh, bruises at her skin obviously she must have got raped several times by her Muslim husband. According to Jamia al Sahir, number 313, a woman who puts on a perfume which others could smell is considered whore or a slut. So my sisters in Europe and America and other Western countries I know you all are very fond of putting on perfumes, but under Sharia law, you won't be allowed to put perfume and you will be stinking every time. And if you put a perfume, you will be considered as a whore or a slut. You will hear Muslims saying that heavens lie beneath mother's feet, but they will never tell you that in Bukhari volume 7, Hadith number 62, Muhammad said that amongst any afflictions, more harmful to men are women. So, according to the Hadith I just told you, men, uh, women are harmful for men. Now, let me ask you something. Are your wives harmful to you? Just suppose you get up every morning and your wife prepares a breakfast for you which helps you uh, getting ready faster. When you come back home, your wife, your daughter, they comfort you, yeah. You get charged up emotionally after looking at your family, after looking at your wife, after spending day long without them. And according to Muhammad, they are harmful to men because one thing that Muhammad did not do any sort of job in his entire life never he did so he doesn't know such values his main occupation was looting tribes innocent tribes selling out their women this is how he earned and this is what he did many of you know what halal is but you don't know what halala 
is halala okay so now listen carefully so halala is an islamic ritual when a muslim man irrevo irrevocably divorce his wife and some other people intentionally plan and arrange for another man to temporarily marry that divorced wife and have sex with her for a night, week, or a month so that divorced wife can become legal again under Sharia law for her first husband to marry her again. This is called Halala. Is Islam from God? Is Islam from heavens? No, it is not from heavens. It is certainly not from God. Heavenly Father loves us. He sent His begotten Son who took cross for us. He was crucified for our love. No, He took our sins away. He took our diseases away. He took our regrets away. This is how much Heavenly Father loves us. And here, what kind of love Allah is having and His stinking Prophet Muhammad is having, I'm telling you now. Such sick Islam is to women, Muslims lie playing takia when they say that men and women are equal in Islam. This is not the case, certainly. Women are considered half to the men, even their testimony is half. If two women give their testimony, it will be considered as one person testimony. In Sahih Muslim, Book 4, Hadith number 1039, Aisha is found complaining that Muhammad has made women equal to dogs and asses. In Kitabul Jihad, Muhammad says that women home and his convents, I mean, convents means means of travel, hold a sinister element. What things hold a sinister element? Women, home, and cars or horses, something like that, are contain sinister elements for men. This is what Muhammad mindset was. Come out of the deception of Islam. Why Muhammad treated women like that? Let me tell you, this is because Israel is a mother who gave birth to the only savior of the, gener of the generations, the Lord Jesus Christ. This movie, which I'm, up uh, which I'm uploading now, is going to be the first part of the other upcoming parts as well. Any of the Christians or atheists or any other re religion sister is attracted toward Islam, kindly watch my videos. I'll be giving more details in other parts of the video. Please keep watching and keep sharing the word. It's the time that we share what we learn against Islam to raise awareness amongst us. At last, now we pray. Our, our, heart, our Father in heavens, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heavens. Give us today our daily bread and forgive our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the, from the evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.